Good evening, and welcome back to yet another splendidly magical Hogwarts sleep story. A moment, if you please, as I'd like to raise my goblet and offer a most nightly thank you to all my valiant sleepy nights for your bountiful comments and unwavering support, and to the fresh squires newly arrived at our merry band craving more wizardly tales, might I encourage a jolly good click on the like button and invite you to pledge your allegiance by subscribing to our channel. Now, let us all recline in our comfiest thrones and embark on a cozy quest to the spell-binding world of Harry Potter. The letter arrived on a Tuesday morning, delivered by a stately tawny owl wrapping its talons on the glass of Lysandra's window. She let the owl in eagerly, offering it a treat as she removed the envelope clutched in its beak. Lysandra recognized the Hogwarts crest immediately, and the sight of that familiar ink made her pulse quicken. She slowly unfolded the parchment and began to read. My dear Lysandra, I was pleased to receive your owl regarding access to the Hogwarts archives and library this summer. Your pursuit of knowledge mirrors that of your aunt Bethilda. I have no doubt her work on Hogwarts A History could benefit from your insightful additions. You have my permission to stay at the castle and utilize the library resources, including the restricted section, as you complete your research. Do tread cautiously. The restricted shelves hold knowledge not meant for all. I regret to inform you that I will be away on important wizarding business for much of the summer. However, our loyal caretaker, Argus Filch, will be present, and I'm sure he could use some company during the long, quiet months. Poor fellow rarely has visitors. Lysandra, your visit comes at an intriguing time. The ghosts have been more restless than usual. The stones seem to whisper of secrets best left undisturbed. Forgotten knowledge that only one such as yourself could uncover. Listen closely during your stay. We eagerly await your owl confirming your arrival. It will be good to have you back home. Until then, I remain Albus Dumbledore. Lysandra carefully refolded the letter 
a scholar's curiosity wearing with a sense of foreboding. She glanced around at her cluttered flat, already imagining the books piled high in the Hogwarts library. What secrets still waited within those walls? A few days later, Lysandra settled into the warm velvet seat aboard the Hogwarts Express, stowing her small suitcase beside her. She was the train's sole passenger. As it whistled to life and slowly chunked out of King's Cross Station, Lysandra felt a swell of melancholy. She gazed out the window at the rolling green hills, passing by in a blur, remembering her childhood journeys to Hogwarts. The train's narrow corridors used to brim with laughter and excited chatter. Now, there was only hollow silence, broken by the occasional rattle of a trolley as it made its way up and down the corridors. Lysandra was a descendant of Bethilda Backshot, the author of Hogwarts A History. She aimed to update her great-great-great-aunt's work with details lost to time. Bethilda's published tales were whimsical and light, skating over the darker mysteries shrouding the ancient school. Lysandra hoped to unravel some of these secrets and preserve them for future generations. The train rolled to a stop at Hockmead Station after nightfall. Cassandra emerged onto the platform illuminated by lamplight. She shivered as a cold wind whipped her cloak. Looking up at the distant turrets of Hogwarts Castle, towering over black trees swaying in the darkness, Lysandra felt utterly isolated. She had never been here during the summer months. She hesitated, then steeled her resolve and began the long walk up to the school alone. The massive oak doors creaked open to Lysandra's touch. Hello? She called tentatively. Only silence answered. Her footsteps echoed through the carnivorous entrance hall as she made her way deeper into the castle. Lantern held aloft. The familiar halls had never seemed so cold, so empty. What secrets lurked in the darkness? Lysandra wandered in the dark halls aimlessly, growing more uneasy. She nearly jumped out of her skin when a shuffling sound came from a nearby corridor. Whirling around, she came face to face with a ragged old cat. Mrs. Norris, Cassandra exclaimed in relief, recognizing the dust-colored feline. 
cat stared at her intelligently for a moment, before turning and padding back down the corridor. Cassandra followed the cat deeper into the shadowy corridors. Her footsteps echoed eerily in the silence. Up ahead, a bar of light spilled from an open doorway. She paused in the entrance, taking in the cramped office cluttered with filing cabinets. At a desk in the corner sat a stooped, raw-boned man examining a set of rusty chains. Mr. Filch? Lysandra said tentatively. I'm Lysandra Blackwood. I sent an owl about... I know who you are, Filch interrupted without looking up. His gravelly voice sounded unused. So Dumbledore granted you permission to disrupt my summer, has he? I promise not to get in your way, Lysandra said quickly. If you could just show me to the guest rooms. Filch scowled, finally meeting her gaze. His eyes were pale and watery. Being a squib, he lacked magical abilities, which Lysandra guessed bred his resentment toward wizarding students. I keep this castle in order all year. Summer is my time for peace and quiet, Miss Blackwood. I just hope it stays that way. Lysandra heard the thinly veiled annoyance in his tone. My apologies. It will stay that way, Mr. Filch. I, I, I'm only here to research. Filch cut her off with an impatient wave of his hands. Guest rooms are upstairs on the left. Now off with you. I'm very busy. Lysandra could sense she wasn't welcome. Filch clearly treasured his isolated summers at Hogwarts before students returned. Her presence had thrown off his routine. She turned and made her way upstairs, feeling the caretaker's gaze follow her suspiciously. A draft whispered down the corridor, stirring the flames in her lantern. Lysandra shivered. The next morning, Lysandra descended to the Great Hall for breakfast. She paused in the doorway, taking in the four long empty house tables. At the far end, she spotted Filch sitting alone eating porridge. She debated at whether to say good morning, but he didn't even glance up at her once. Lysandra took a seat at the Gryffindor table, far enough away from Filch, and helped herself to toast and jam. The sound of clinking silverware echoed off the stone walls. Neither she nor Filch spoke. The only noise was the fluttering of a couple of owls delivering the daily profit. Finishing her pumpkin juice, Lysandra stood and without thinking she said, I'll be in the library all day if you need anything, Mr. Felch. She immediately regretted opening her mouth. 
Filch merely grunted in reply, not looking up from his porridge. Lysandra left the caretaker to his solitary meal. The walk to the library reassured her. She knew the promise of dusty old books waited within, full of history and knowledge. Their comforting pages could transport her imagination far from the uneasy silence that had settled over the castle. And soon, she was weaving through the maze of shelves to the restricted section, tracing her fingers along the cracked spines she selected a few promising titles to start her research. Cassandra settled down at a table, already strewn with parchments and books. Soon, she was completely engrossed, taking meticulous notes on details on how to add to Bathilda's manuscript. Lysandra spent long nights poring over text in the library's restricted section. One night, as she browsed a shelf of crumbling diaries, her eyes landed on a large leather-bound book wedged down between the others. Pulling it out, Cassandra saw the title etched in peeling gold letters. Hogwarts A History Research Notes by Bathilda Bagshot Her heart leapt. This must be Bathilda's original research for her book. With trembling hands, Cassandra opened the heavy book. Frayed parchment pages were filled edge to edge with Bathilda's slanted scrawl. Annotations crammed into every margin. Sketches of castle architecture and floor plans accompanied some passages. As Lysandra gently turned the fragile pages, Several folded letters slipped out and fluttered to the table. Lysandra's hands trembled as she unfolded the brittle parchment letters. The first was written in Bathilda's looping scrawl. Dear Phineas, My research into Hogwarts' origins has led me down unexpected paths. There are whispers amongst the portraits and ghosts of an ancient evil that lurks within the castle. One even the founders of Hogwarts could not destroy. They call it the Entity. Have you heard mention of this from past headmasters? Any information you could provide would be invaluable to documenting a comprehensive history of Hogwarts. I'm afraid this is deeper and darker than I initially realized. Please owl me at your earliest convenience. Yours sincerely. Bethilda. The reply from Headmaster Black was short and urgent. Bethilda, do not speak of the entity, especially not in your book. Some secrets are better left in the dark. Yours, P.N.B. 
the Sandra's pulse quickened. The headmaster's terse warning only heightened the mystery. She quickly checked the dates. This exchange happened over a century ago. What was this entity Bathilda had uncovered in her research? And why was the headmaster so insistent it remain hidden? Cassandra's mind raced as she left the library, clutching Bathilda's research notes. The vague references to the entity had sparked more questions than answers. She hurried back to her room, eager to further examine the book. Zandra lit the oil lamps with a wave of her hand and settled down at the old wooden desk by the window. The first hundred pages or so contain Bathilda's initial background research. Notes on the founders, sketches of the castle layout, and lists of headmasters. But then, the tone shifted. Bathilda's writing became more frantic, filling every inch of the yellow pages. She referenced sinister discoveries, things moving in the dark just outside her vision, whispers echoing from the walls when she thought herself alone. There was also scribbles of a fire in the great hall. More troubling were her allusions to the entity. Bathilda seemed to believe it was some kind of ancient evil lurking within Hogwarts, dating back to the Founder's era. Her letters begged former headmasters for any information they could provide. One chilling entry read, I fear the entity is growing stronger, feeding on the darkness now gripping the wizarding world. Just what had Bethilda uncovered during this research? And why had the headmasters she wrote seemed so eager to bury this secret history? Lysandra needed to learn more. She closed the book with a thud, heart racing. The friendly halls of Hogwarts suddenly felt sinister. Was there really an ominous presence hidden here all this time? Sandra shook her head. She had to focus on her task. The truth lay somewhere in these pages and she was determined to bring it to light. Over the next few days, Cassandra became absorbed in studying Bathilda's research book, eager for any clues about the entity. She even took her meals in the library, not wanting to lose a moment of reading time. On the fifth day, Filch suddenly appeared while Lysandra was researching. She jumped, not having heard him approach. Find anything interesting? He asked, gesturing at the piles of books around her. Lysandra hesitated. Just some background for Hogwarts a history. Filch peered at the notes strewn across the table. Hogwarts history has its share of secrets, he said casually, but his eyes were sharp. 
Cassandra recalled Filch had tended the castle for over 50 years. If anyone knew its mysteries, it would be him. Could she trust him with what she'd learned? Have you... Have you ever heard of something called the Entity? She ventured. Filch's bushy eyebrows shot up. For a moment, his eyes held an unreadable expression. But then, he schooled his features. There's no point in dwelling on school legends, he grunted. Superstitious nonsense, if you ask me. He walked off into the shadows. But, Cassandra detected a shift behind his nonchalant facade. Filch clearly knew more than he let on about this hidden history. After another few hours studying, she left for her room. Cassandra's hurried footsteps echoed down the empty corridor as she made her way back from the library very late at night. The only light came from the flickering torches lining the walls. Casting dancing shadows across the stone Cassandra quickened her pace down the corridor, eager to return to the safety of her room. Without warning, the torches extinguished, plunging her into pitch blackness. She froze on the spot, pulse racing. Suddenly, a faint whispering sound came right next to her ear. Lysandra. She opened her mouth to cast a spell, but icy fingers suddenly gripped her wrist in the darkness. She screamed in terror. At that very moment, all the torches relit on the wall, revealing Filch standing before her, lantern raised. You all right, Miss Blackwood? He asked gruffly. Cassandra wrenched her hand from his grasp, breathing hard. Filch's sudden presence frightened her almost as much as the unseen entity in the darkness. She needed to get out of these halls tonight. I'm fine. Just tired, I think. Cassandra managed, her voice shaking. Good night, Mr. Filch. I'd stay in your room at night from now on, Miss Blackwood. The castle does seem very, um, very curious these past nights. Some kind of disturbance crumbling, I think. Feeling the caretaker's eyes follow her suspiciously. Cassandra broke into a run once out of sight desperate to reach the safety of her own room. But she couldn't escape the lingering chill of that icy grip on her wrist, or the feeling that the entity's unseen presence still clung to the shadows. Lysandra rushed back to her room, slamming the door behind her. 
she leaned against it, catching her breath as she lit the oil lamps with a wave of her wand. Settling at her desk, Cassandra carefully turned the worn pages of Bethilda's research. Near the back, she found a passage that made her blood run cold. I have glimpsed the entity that haunts the castle. Its visage chills my soul. A shifting, formless mass of swirling darkness. Its rasping whispers speak of vengeance against all who draw too close to its buried secrets. It knows I am unraveling its hidden past, and it will stop at nothing to remain obscured. The book slipped from Lysandra's shaking hands. This was no benevolent presence, but a sinister evil intent on keeping its existence concealed. And her presence alone awoken something that meant her harm. Something that could emerge from the shadows again at any moment. Over the next few days, Lysandra thought she noticed a gradual but disturbing change in Filch. At first, Lysandra thought little of the caretaker's increased lingering around the library while she studied. But gradually, she noticed Filch appearing more and more frequently whenever she was in the library, always feigning coincidence. Lysandra couldn't shake the feeling of being watched now. Sometimes she thought she heard faint whispers and shuffling footsteps following her through the empty corridors. One night, finding her bedroom door inexplicably ajar, Lysandra felt someone had been inside her room while she was out. But nothing seemed disturbed. She glimpsed Filch muttering under his breath even more, but could never make out his words. Lysandra wondered if she was imagining sinister tones when in fact he was merely grumbling harmless complaints. Deep down though, she sensed these incidents were connected to her ongoing investigation into the entity. Or perhaps her own paranoia was simply getting the better of her. But one thing was for sure, Her fear was growing every night. The castle felt different. The portraits were empty, and even the ghosts weren't anywhere to be seen. Lysandro awoke with a start late one night the sound of a distant crashing and banging. Heart pounding, she lit her wand and hurried into the dark corridor. As she approached the great hall, a noise grew louder, mixed with shouts. Bursting through the tall doors with wand raised, Cassandra stopped short. Filch stood on the teacher's desk, 
using his tattered overcoat to smother flames rising from the Gryffindor table. He whirled around, face red from exertion and eyes wide. Fire, he rasped, fire. Lysandra rushed over to help, using a spell to douse the last smouldering embers. This is no accident, Miss Blackwood, Filch growled, gesturing at the smouldering tables. Strange events have plagued the castle since your arrival. Lysandra felt a chill. What are you implying? Filch's eyes bore into hers. Years ago, your Aunt Bethilda came lousing around, stirring up secrets better left alone. Her meddling awakened something too. An ancient darkness. Sandra's pulse quickened. The Entity, she whispered. Filch nodded grimly. I think maybe your presence has roused it again. His power grows. I can feel it. Lysandra hesitated, then retrieved Bethilda's research from her robes, showing Filch the passage about the entity's vengeful whispers. I found this in her notes, but any clues about the entity's origins were destroyed. Filch paced, muttering under his breath, before stopping abruptly. The library restricted section. If answers exist, that's where we'll find them. Together, they scoured the dusty shelves until Lysandra discovered a worn text called The Founder's Fables. Lysandra carefully turned the ancient pages studying the unsettling tale. It says here, a powerful dark wizard named Daedalus demanded to join the founders in creating Hogwarts. And when they refused, he attacked. Filch leaned in closer, eyes widening as he followed along. They defeated him, but Daedalus used the last of his strength to meld his essence into the very stones of the castle, Lysandra continued. He became an entity bound to Hogwarts itself. Felch slammed his fist on the table. That's why we've never got rid of the blasting thing. It's ingrained in the bloody walls. Lysandra met his gaze grimly. Daedalus is the entity that's been awakened. He wants vengeance for being rejected and imprisoned here all these centuries. Lysandra shuddered visioning the raging spirit of a spurned dark wizard swirling through the halls. Now a sinister evil lurked within every stone, awakened once more. After discovering the entity's origins, Lysandra felt a flicker of hopelessness. How can we possibly defeat something woven into the very stones of the castle? Filch paced, brow furrowed in thought. Then he stopped a 
abruptly. The founder's chamber, the founding stone, he muttered. Dumbledore said that relic contains powerful magic. It may be our only chance, Miss Blackwood. The Sandra leaned forward eagerly. What is this founding stone? Filch's eyes glinted. According to legend, the founders enchanted the first stone ever laid for Hogwarts to protect the castle. It lies deep in a hidden secret chamber. If we could reach this stone, do you think its magic could stop the entity? The Sandra asked. Filch slowly nodded. Perhaps, yes. I do know where the chamber lies. Sandra set her jaw resolutely. Whatever it takes. Filch studied her a moment before turning toward the door. All right. Let's go with it. Sandra's felt a spark of hope as she followed Filch out the door. Perhaps the ancient magic of Hogwarts itself could help defeat this evil that had awakened within its halls. Filch lit a lantern and led Lysandra deep into the castle's underbelly. Through twisting passages and down crumbling staircases. Lysandra stayed close, wary of shadows flickering in the darkness. At last, they reached a dead end corridor. Strange echoes of anguished screams sounded from behind the stone wall. Lysandra shivered. Filch withdrew a wand from his robes. Lysandra stared in shock as he tapped the stones in complex patterns until they rumbled open to reveal a dark chamber. As Filch stepped forward, Lysandra grabbed his arm. You're a squip. How can you use magic? She demanded. He met her gaze with pale eyes that made her blood run cold. Clever girl, he rasped, his voice now sinister. He grabbed her arm and threw her into the dark chamber. Lysandra staggered back in horror. Filch walked forward the chamber entrance closing behind him. The torches flared to life, revealing another Argus Filch, unconscious and chained against the far wall. The Syndra blinked in confusion, looking between the two Filches, until she noticed the Filch before her had eyes that glowed blood red. You're not Filch, she gasped. Lysandra's blood turned to ice. It's been you all along, she whispered. You're the entity. You did. 
deceived me. And you made it so easy, child. The entity sneered through Filcher's face. And now, with Filcher's consciousness and your magical power, I shall be reborn and Hogwarts will be mine. It advanced toward her, each step making the air grow colder. Cassandra stumbled back, groping for her wand with shaking fingers. She had delivered herself straight into the hands of this ancient evil. Now this castle shall finally be mine, the entity rasped, Filch's face twisting into a hideous smile. Cassandra screamed as it reached for her, a sound echoing off the chamber walls. Entity raised its wand, shooting a spell. Lysandra dove behind a stone pillar as the entity sent a blast of energy at her. She peered around the edge and aimed her wand, stupefied. The spell just missing the entity. Lysandra had to keep fighting, but suddenly she felt the stones beneath her begin to vibrate. The torches burned brighter, as if the castle itself was rallying to her defense. The entity started to shriek in agony. Incendio, Cassandra yelled. Flames erupted around the entity, causing it to recoil, the chamber starting to collapse. You cannot stop me, child, it grasped. I am eternal. It surged forward, but then recoiled again as if striking an invisible barrier. Lysandra realized the castle's ancient magic was protecting her. The founder's magic was still present. With hope renewed, she fired spells until the entity gave a last wail before dissipating into black smoke. The chamber rumbled dust and stones raining down. The entity wasn't gone yet. Lysandra raced to the real Finch chained against the wall. He coughed awake. The chamber's going to collapse. Can you move? Lysandra asked urgently, blasting his chains apart. Filch tried standing, but sank back down with a grimace. Lysandra hoisted his arm over her shoulder, and together they staggered toward the exit. The corridor was starting to crumble, huge chunks of stone crashing down around them. Lysandra grunted, with exertion, half carrying Filch along. With a final burst of effort, they dove through the doorway, seconds before the entire chamber collapsed. Lysandra lay gasping on the ground with the real Filch. They had made it out alive. The entity sealed again for now. Filch looked up at her. 
thanks for that. What's your name then? It's Lysandra Blackwood. How long have you been in there? I think about six months at least. Let's get you to the medical wing. Lysandra awoke slowly, blinking against the brightness. She was lying in a chair in the Hogwarts hospital wing. Morning sunlight streaming through the windows. Ah, you're awake, came a familiar voice. Lysandra turned to see Albus Dumbledore seated beside her, his eyes twinkling behind his half-moon spectacles. Professor Dumbledore, Lysandra asked groggily. I see you and Mr. Filch had quite the summer. The castle informed me of the entity's return the moment I arrived this morning. At the mention of Filch, Lysandra sat up and quickly looked over at him. In the bed beside her lay Filch, still unconscious but breathing evenly. Is he... Is he going to be okay? He will recover thanks to you, Dumbledore said gently. Poppy healed his wounds. He just needs rest now. Lysandra exhaled in relief. After facing the entity's evil together, she had grown to respect Filch and his devotion to Hogwarts. I'm proud of you both, Dumbledore continued. You showed great courage and quick thinking last night. Hogwarts is safe again because of you. I look forward to reading about it in the new edition of Hogwarts A History. Although, maybe Bethilda was right, of course. Dumbledore rose from his chair. Maybe some secrets belong in the dark. However, that decision is yours. Miss Blackwood. Dumbledore left the hospital wing. The horror of the entity was finally over. A new chapter in Hogwarts history had been written. Though Lysandra suspected, this tale would remain untold for a long while.